of Joe Warren of Powerball. Welcome to Ecosum. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot clicker. for the. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity to talk to you all today. Uh, my name is Joe Warren. I'm managing director of Power Vault. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about our plug and play energy storage pro product. And I'm also going to tell you a bit of a story about crowdfunding, which I thought you might find uh, interesting. Uh, so just to give you a little background, um, uh, in 2010, uh, Feed and Tariffs uh, were launched in the UK. And at that stage, there were very, very few uh, roofs in the UK with solar PV. Now, that market has really taken off in the last four years, and we now have 500,000 homes in the UK with solar PV panels on the roof. And if you look at DEX PV strategy, the target for the end of 2015 is a million roofs, and for the end of 2020 would be around 2 million. So the way it usually works for customers is that their solar panels generate electricity during the day. Many of these people are not in their homes and are not using that energy. And then they get back in the evening and they import electricity. And this is happening at peak times. So it's bad for the customer because they have to pay extra for the electricity that they generated earlier. And it's bad for the grid. So our product very simply stores energy during the day. Uh, it gives it back to the customer in the evening. And this solves two key problems for them. The first is it can reduce their energy costs by around 15% a year. Second of all, they can also access some of that energy in the event of a power outage to sort of help provide them with energy security. Now, at PowerVault, uh, we've got three uh, really key um, focuses, and the first is cost. We've worked really hard to get our product down to the very lowest cost point that we can. Uh, we've looked very carefully at uh, consumption profiles and generation profiles to get that payback for the customer. We've also tried to really make the customer uh, the key uh, focus of our uh, product. The product um, is plug and play. We have patents pending on a number of plug and play features, which make the product much easier for the customer to install, or if they want to, for a solar installer to install the product, then that, that's an option as well. Uh, we've made the product look like an appliance, uh, like a household appliance, uh, and made it look as attractive as we can. as an emergency power socket for uh, energy security. Uh, and then also we're looking uh, after the batteries after they've uh, worn out and providing a recycling service to the customer. In terms of the team, uh, I'm Joe Warren. I worked at Open Energy, a demand-side response provider, for seven years. I worked on smart grid products with National Grid and created a, a new market for smart grid uh, product in the UK. Our technical development director, Tony Duffin, has over 20 years engineering experience. He's worked in uh, low carbon ventures for around 10 years and has spent the last five years working uh, in various startups. Andrew Wordsworth uh, founded the company. Uh, he's formerly managing director of Carbon Trust Enterprise Limited uh, and has raised more than 250 million pounds worth of equity commitments for around 20 startups. Uh, we're also very pleased because Simon Ackland, uh, former managing director of Questa, uh, has agreed to come on board as chairman in uh, the last few weeks. We've had some great support from a number of great partners. Um, perhaps uh, most, most importantly, Climate Kick have given us both um, uh, some cash, which has been very handy, uh, and also some coaching. Uh, and a lot of the work that we did with them is stuff that we use every day uh, to inform our market decisions. We've also had uh, a lot of support from the Technology Strategy Board, uh, from prizes like uh, people like Nesta, uh, we're also working with a number of partners, and we've been selling our product uh, through solar installers to customers, uh, for example, through Greenman Solar. Uh, briefly, in terms of the evolution, the company was founded in 2012. Last year, we raised uh, a significant amount of grant funding, uh, developed some prototypes. This year, what we've been doing is focusing on taking those prototypes to market as a product, uh, which we've done. Uh, we've also uh, received some recognition from a number of uh, prize giving bodies as well. Uh, most importantly, we recently uh, closed a £150,000 round on Crowdcube. We believe this is the fastest um, clean tech crowdfunding campaign uh, to date. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. We're going to use that money to help to fulfill the early orders that we're receiving, to reduce the cost of the product, and also to put in place manufacturing facilities. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about the um, crowdfunding. Um, we decided um, sort of in mid-August that we were going to use crowdfunding to raise our seed round of £150,000. Um, we spent around a month of very intense activity building the pitch on the crowdfunding platform. 
Uh, literally every sentence is fact-checked. There's a lot of due diligence which is done. Uh, all the financials are checked with a fine-tooth comb, and there's a great sort of really fun bit, which is making the video and trying to persuade as many people as possible to kind of co-star in the video with you and get some good locations. Um, and uh, then the launch day itself came along, very intense time. Uh, we just promoted uh, our pitch to as many people as we could, uh, people we knew, existing angels we knew, our friends, our family, everybody uh, got an email or a tweet. Uh, and we managed to close the, the, the crowdfunding round in um, eight hours. So um, it's been hugely important for, for so basically for three reasons. First of all, we got the money, uh, which is um, really important for the business. Um, but it's also shown some credibility because about 20 people logged into Crowdcube, looked at our pitch, and decided to invest on the basis of that. Finally, it's um, setting us up well for a follow-on round. We will need to raise more money uh, in the next um, sort of six to nine months. Um, and we already have a, you know, a, a group of people who didn't manage to get into the first uh, seed round. So that's going to give us a good start on that. I mentioned that we will be raising some more money next year. Um, probably around £500,000. Um, we will carry on looking uh, and securing grant funding uh, to provide a better return for investors. Um, we'll use that money uh, to develop and expand our relationships with utilities, uh, open new channels, expand the existing solar PV channel, uh, and then also improve our manufacturing to give early investors a return of around 60%. So um, I'd be really uh, happy to take any questions you've got about crowdfunding or about PowerVault. Um, so throw the floor open to you. Do, um, do people actually get equity um, on Crowdcube? Or is it yeah, it, it is a, it's predominantly an equity platform. So yeah. equity is the default option. You can offer people a gift. So we could have given all the investors a PowerVault who put in a certain amount of money. Uh, but the primary focus is um, as a sort of an equity crowdfunding platform. And how many individual investors did you have in that round? Uh, 19. 19? Yeah. And how many of them will become a customer? Uh, well, uh, interesting, a lot of them are in both camps, yeah. So there are people who want to be a customer and an investor, so probably half a dozen of those uh, will become customers as well. And Crowdcube is uh, the leading UK platform, right? They are market That's right, leader yeah. by far. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, they've got about 8,000 investors on there. Um, and, uh, you know, I think they do a good job of uh, promoting the pitches and getting those investors in touch with um, companies. Mm. So, yeah. And, um, and among the 19 investors uh, are a few that you already knew before. So yeah, basically, no, I mean, that's a, they a, could a have point. done so a, another deal with you, a direct deal, but they prefer to do it via Crowdcube. Absolutely. Well, we were already in touch with some angels, so around sort of 40% of the money came from people that we already knew. Yeah. Uh, but the great thing about the crowdfunding is it provides some urgency, it helps you to close the deal, uh, and also to bring in people who you've never met before, um, mm. you know, which is where the bulk of the money came from investors that we'd never even spoken to. What is uh, the cost of that round? How much uh, percent fee does a Crowdcube get? Uh, I think that's um, commercially confidential between us and them, but I mean, it could well be on their website if it's something that they publish. Okay, a couple of percent, usually five or something. Do you have a question for Joe? Gaia, I can see your hand. Hi. I Hi. love that you um, talked a lot about the investment, and it's really interesting. But what about the technology? What are the biggest challenges that you encounter technology-wise? Sure, I guess um, that's no a good pressure. question. I mean, we spent uh, a couple of years um, you know, on developing the product. Um, fundamentally, we're mostly focused on trying to make a proposition that works for the customer, that the customer wants to buy. Um, we can buy uh, various commodity components um, to make our product. Um, there's lots of established battery technologies and inverter technologies. Um, I guess the biggest challenge we have now is to reduce the cost. So we have an aggressive cost uh, reduction target. We will get there. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest challenge at the moment is the cost of it um, rather than the functionality. So at the moment, uh, we're selling them for £1,800. Um, our target is to bring that down to um, 1000 fairly rapidly. Um, which uh, we're, we're very confident that we can do. Uh, at the moment, we're, um, uh, the base model is around three kilowatt hours, but we also offer options for increased or decreased levels of storage. Um, we focused on making the product quite uh, small in terms of storage capacity because it's optimized for UK homes. So it's just the right size. 
Um, one of the challenges for energy storage is the depreciation cycle cost per use. So if you buy a Tesla, it costs you $3 to fill it up and $50 of depreciation in the small print. Um, so you're, you've got 1,800 pounds for your product and three kilowatt hours of battery capacity, and you're saving three times 15p, 35p electricity a day. What's the depreciation cycle cost per use of your battery per day and uh, what chemistry are you using and how, what life cycles are they? There's quite a few questions uh, in that one. Um, so uh, the headline is at the moment, you know, £1,800, the kind of people who are going to want to buy it are buying it for a number of different reasons, not just for the economic uh, basis, uh, perhaps buying it for the emergency power socket for the sort of feeling of security, uh, and then also, um, you know, the economic uh, benefit is sort of the cherry on top of the cake. They also want to use more of their energy. So these are sort of the early adopter um, uh, kind of objectives for purchasing something at that price point. Um, the batteries, uh, we're using lead-acid batteries. Um, a lot of competitors are using uh, lithium-ion. Uh, there is uh, some research that we've done with the University of Oxford um, over the last uh, couple of years, looking at how we can uh, squeeze the best performance out of a lead-acid battery. Uh, so we're quite uh, kind of happy about that. Probably over the lifetime, the sort of 15-year lifetime of the product, the batteries will need to be replaced. Um, and we're sort of upfront about that with customers. But the, the key thing is we can get an, a low cost point to, to get people to buy the product in the first place. All right. Thank you very much, Joe. Cheers. Thanks. <laughs>